all, and thanks a lot for inviting us to present at DH 2023. I am going to talk about the case of collaboration practices between people and tools, and I will do that on the example of an ongoing project, which is Snora et a collaborative bibliography. Uh, let me uh, say, first of all, that this project is part of a bigger uh, excellence initiative that ran from 2018 to 2022 at the University of Verona around the topic the uh, digital humanities applies the, to foreign languages and literatures. But what is the scope of our project? Uh, well, the project um, um, is to be seen in the context uh, of Old Norse studies uh, and it deals specifically with one of the most important sources for the study of Old Norse mythology, which is Snorri Sturluson's Edna. Actually, this work is, was conceived as a sort of a handbook for the poets to be, and as a sort of medieval ars poetica. And we are also in the context of reception studies because we are interested in seeing the evidence of um, the reception and of the popularity of this work across the centuries and the uh, different cultures and also academic cultures. And our idea was to build a collaborative crowdsourcing bibliography um, containing both primary sources and secondary sources on the topic as Norris Edda. What kind of material do we have to handle? We have medieval manuscripts, we have old editions, uh, such as this Editio Prim Caps, uh, dating back to 1665. We have modern editions and translations, uh, as in the case of uh, the Italian translation by Gianna Chiesa Isnardi. Uh, and then we have uh, various kinds of scholarship, uh, such as edited volumes, but also monographs, uh, theses, uh, scholarly articles, and when relevant, also related items. Uh, I do not know the um, review of a particular monograph. And we also considered the online projects, uh, such as the Scaldic project, uh, that uh, is very important for the ones who work in the field of Old Norse studies. Why is that so difficult to um, create a bibliography around a single subject uh, uh, as, as Norris had? First of all, we are in front of uh, a complex, uh, open and fluid text, which is uh, usually divided into four main parts. We have uh, a prologue, the formale. We have uh, the Gulf of Ginning, which is the mythological section of the work. We have the dialogues on poetry, which uh, are called the Skalds Kaparmal. And then we have original verses written by Snorri himself, the Hatatal. As for the manuscript tradition, the work is preserved in four main manuscripts and various fragments. The Codex Regius is usually considered the most authoritative text. Then we have the Codex Upsaliensis, which is the oldest and which also provides us with the title of the work and with the name of the poet. And then we have a modern uh, apograph, uh, the Codex Trajectinos, and together with that, the Codex Formianos, which is important because there the uh, Edda is coupled with the so-called grammatical treatises. Um, the editorial tradition uh, of this work and also the translations mirror the complexity of this textual transmission, because you have to know that uh, Snorri's Edda was edited and translated not much as a whole, but by excerpts, so in single parts, only the mythological part or the poetic uh, part. And this also influenced a lot the way in which uh, um, the work was received across the centuries and cultures. And we have also a huge amount of scholarship revolving around Snorri's Edda also called uh, Younger Edda or Prose Edda. But there is also a huge amount of scholarship uh, around uh, a work which is not the Snorri uh, Edda, but which is the Poetic Edda, also called the Elder Edda. So there is also this ambiguity in the name which makes uh, uh, things even more difficult. And that's why many scholars uh, um, claimed that it is almost impossible to create a bibliography uh, around uh, the Eddas. 
Now, we have tried to do uh, that. We focused only on Snorri's ad. And we uh, believed that a digital approach could be also uh, a good solution for this kind of uh, complexity. Um, in order to uh, create our bibliographical database, uh, we first examined the most important uh, repertoires uh, um, concerning uh, Snorri Sturluson. Um, we have uh, considered uh, the bibliographies on Icelandic literature and uh, on Nordic mythology. And for the recent updates, we have also uh, looked uh, at uh, other projects online bibliographies, library catalogs, and many other uh, resources that we have listed in our website, if you are interested. Now, what I'm going to present in a couple of minutes is the latest development of a project which is uh, way older, because it started almost 20 years ago uh, by uh, the initiative of Adele Cipolla, and uh, together with her team, she started to collect uh, uh, bibliographical uh, data around this topic. And uh, she started uh, together with the Centro di Informatica Humanistica of the University of Pisa to think about the solution for data um, visualization and uh, search. Then in 2016, a new phase of the project started. And it is also when I uh, began to collaborate um, we updated uh, uh, the data, we corrected mistakes, uh, and we migrated uh, the data to a new uh, database, which is now uh, published. It was published in 2022, and it's called Snorred, a collaborative bibliography. It is not only um, about the history of the project, but we can also trace back the history of the tools that we have used in order to develop the project. So at first it was a, a, a software that was created ad hoc for data uh, collecting and uh, visualization and search. Then we moved uh, all the data to a Zotero uh, group library, which allowed more or less the same functionality. And then we uh, also decided to export our data in a customized XMLTI format. Um, although Zotero uh, does provide an exporting functionality in uh, uh, TEI, it does not contain all the metadata that are relevant for our purposes. And this is the reason why we implemented the Python script that uh, assembles uh, the uh, exported XMLTI files by directly accessing the Zotero API. Um, the exported data and metadata serve for visualization and search through uh, a web app, um, a customized web app built on top of TBTI Publisher. Um, the application displays the data following the Zotero model in a simplified way and enables the users uh, to retrieve and browse the data. Um, and the available content by different filters. Uh, if uh, one wants to um, integrate the database, to populate the database with new entries, then you go back to the Zotero uh, database and we regularly update our visualization uh, uh, interface. Um, this is how our Zotero group library looks like. Um, and um, if you want to have a look inside, uh, there is uh, a big container which is called Snoraeta, and inside it there are several sub-collections corresponding to the item typology. And then each entry is enriched with a series of uh, uh, metadata. Um, we attached to each entry uh, some text describing either the item typology or the content. And if relevant, you can find also related uh, uh, items. And then you can, you can export the whole or part of the bibliography in different formats, uh, among which there is also uh, a TI. Uh, the new database is displayed in this way. In TI Publisher, you have um, uh, several introductory texts and the documentation of the project. And then if you click on the open button, you can access the full database. 
There you can browse the data by subcollection or you can filter by tags. You can sort by different kinds of criteria. Uh, and then you can also insert a string of characters in order to um, find specific uh, uh, entries. Here it is an example of an entry and uh, in here you can download uh, the data and view more details if you are interested. This is um, uh, a demo uh, of our database. So say that uh, I am interested in seeing all the articles in uh, Michelanio's work. Uh, I want to order them by date and I want to filter them by author. And then I write the name of the author, in this case, Cipolla. And then what we get is all the articles in Michelanio's work, which were uh, written by Cipolla. Here you can see the XML if you want, or you can go back and see uh, more details uh, on the uh, item, um, including, yes, uh, the tags or the Zotero uh, link. Finally, uh, the a script that uh, we have uh, uh, created can be found if you are interested on GitHub uh, because we wanted to allow other users to take full control of exporting content uh, from Zotero via its API. So we believe that this kind of collaboration, which is a collaboration between tools, uh, Zotero and TI Publisher, but also between people, so collaborating in uh, um, developing this bibliography, in populating this database, could be really a viable and effective way if you want to find a solution in order to develop a web app um, for browsing and searching data that are previously collaboratively collected. If you want to know more about the project, you can refer to our context here and uh, thanks a lot for your attention.